And now Chef Robert is here in the kitchen with me, and we're going to make something with watermelon. What are we going to make? Yes, we're going to do a nice uh, fresh watermelon salad today with a little bit of citrus, um, a nice cheese spread underneath of it, and some fresh uh, herbs and toasted prosciutto too. Oh, wonderful. Yes. All right. How do we get started? All right, wonderful. So we're starting off with a little bit of baby kale, um, some fresh mint leaves, and some Italian flat leaf parsley. Uh, the mint's going to kind of be this aspect that'll kind of cut the sweetness of the citrus um, and kind of add that balance to it. Okay. And then the parsley will kind of give us that little bit of a crunch as well. Some of that there, our Italian flat leaf parsley. It's in there. Um, we're going to take a little bit of the zest as well as a little bit of the juice. A bit of lemon zest as well. All right. Wonderful. Let's try that. A fresh sea salt. A little cracked black pepper. And uh, I think we can go ahead and start plating. All right. All wonderful. Right. This little cream mixture uh, is some fresh feta cheese some mascarpone, some fresh uh, goat cheese. This is gonna kinda be a kind of decomposed salad, not uh, traditional, kinda all whipped together um, and thrown together. Uh, those kinda be individual. Mm -hmm. Also what I really like about this salad is it kinda can be turned into uh, a nice appetizer for if you were having people over and wanted to put these things on skewers. Um, you can kinda do the same ingredients with tossing this lettuce, maybe cut it up a little bit smaller so it kinda coats over the watermelon. And then they could, people could pick them up and eat them kind of oh, like that nice. as well. Nice. I'll go ahead and just put down our watermelons. Four nice big chunks of yeah. watermelon here. Beautiful color, too. This great watermelon out of Muscatine, Iowa. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. We got some fresh Belgian endive leaves as well, as well. This will add a nice crunch to it. And prosciutto is going to add a little bit of the saltiness that we're looking for to kind of cut the sweetness of the mm -hmm. watermelon. This is also from uh, La Quercia, which is uh, in Norwalk, Iowa as right, well. Right, right. Go ahead and kind of spread these leaves all over here. Garnish a little bit of fresh radish. Very nice, easy, simple flavors. Uh, everything very fresh and seasonal. Yeah. All right. Then we can go ahead and finish with a little bit of fresh extra virgin olive oil. Well, we need to we try this. It. Yes. Here's a fork Thank for you. you. I want to make sure I get some of that cheese in there. A little bit of everything, huh? All right. This is kind of nice, too. Kind of use it as your spoon as well. Oh, excellent. <laughs> All right. Mm. That is delicious. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, we've made a fabulous watermelon dish, and now we're going to cook with another kind of melon. Yes. What are we going to make? Uh, so we're going to do um, a venison tenderloin, and the melon that we're going to incorporate with this is cantaloupe uh, that we've actually tossed in a little bit of uh, fresh herbs, oregano, um, and some fresh citrus as well. Okay, nice. All right, um, and the venison is first, Yeah, right? so let's start off with the venison. And all we've done here uh, is a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, um, and a rub of fresh ground coffee and vanilla bean. Oh, okay. all right. Go ahead and start that. Right. All right, as we get a nice good sear on that, um, what we're then going to do is just throw it in the oven, mm -hmm. and we're going to make uh, the starch that's going to be the part of this dish, which is going to be a nice Parmesan gnocchi. Oh, lovely. All right. We'll let that venison go for a good eight to 10 minutes, and we'll pull it out to kind of rest the meat as well. All right. So what we've done here is, uh, like I said, just your normal russet potato. Um, that we've cooked off in the oven, 350, uh, for about 35, 45 minutes. Um, then we're gonna take these potatoes and just kinda cut them in half. And then we're actually gonna run them through a ricer. No skins, just the insides here. We're gonna season the potatoes with a little bit of uh, fresh sea salt, cracked black pepper, 
A little Parmigiano Reggiano. Lovely. As well as putting it in the sauce, it's nice to have it in the potato too to kind of have that creaminess in the center of it. A uh, good rule of thumb for eggs um, is about one egg for every two large potatoes. We did about four small potatoes. We'll just do one large egg here. Okay. Mix this all together, get that cheese melted with a nice hot potato that's in there. Dose of our flour here. All right, got that nice and formed into a ball there. We're just gonna roll these into ropes. That's all we're gonna do. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut those. To be a little dumpling size. Right before we throw this gnocchi in, go ahead and grab that uh, venison loin out and let that rest for a little right. while. While that's resting, we can go ahead and cook off our gnocchi as well. We're gonna cook these uh, for a couple minutes, uh, about a minute and a half after they rise is a kind of a good, good go to go to on uh, the consistency you want inside the gnocchi. Okay. All right, they look like they're ready to go. Yes, floating there, we've had them going for about a minute. And go ahead and take the strainer and go straight into our hot butter pan here. All right. Wonderful. Great. All right, we're just gonna get a nice cream sauce on the, on the outside of it. It's not to um, necessarily take over the dish as much mm -hmm. as it is just to coat the pasta is all we wanna do. Okay. So a little fresh heavy cream. A little Parmesan as well. Wonderful. It's hard to overdo there. All right. Go ahead and stir those around for me. All right. While those are going, I'll go ahead and uh, take our melon that, like I said, had a, has a little uh, fresh oregano on it. We're just gonna take a little bit of the lemon juice and lime juice. This gives a really nice fresh element to uh, the, the hardiness and creaminess that we're doing with the venison and the gnocchi sure, and the yeah. couple purees as well. All right, those look great. We can go ahead and shift okay. that off there. Let that sit and we can begin plating. Wonderful. So, we're gonna go ahead and start off with uh, our carrot puree. Oh, the color in that is so beautiful. It's amazing when you juice, you know, fresh vegetables like yeah. that. And they really hold their con consistency of color. That is stunning. This is just a little fresh parsnip puree. We'll take uh, some fresh broccoli. This has just been blanched in a little bit of water with uh, salt and then cooled down in an ice bath. Gives it that real fresh and raw taste to it as well. Our fresh uh, cantaloupe here. This is gonna be too pretty to eat, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal to start off with. You have to eat with your eyes first. I like it to come to the table and you'd be just as surprised with the flavors of it as you are with the plating design of yeah. it. Yeah. So a little fresh salt ro roasted fennel here. We'll go ahead and slice up our venison. And how about the gnocchi? All right. Perfect. It's ready to go. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And we'll finish it off with a little bit of the veal roll reduction. And last but not least, a little bit of the fresh carrot tops. Tops off of the fresh carrots that we actually juiced for the puree. And there we go. Wonderful, that is so beautiful. Thank you. There are too many parts to know what to try, <laughs> but I'll try some. Perfect. <laughs> I'll start right. with some of the melon and parsnips. That's fantastic. fantastic. Thank you so much. Sure, thank you.